Somebody the other day asked me, how can you input notes really quickly in logic using step time? But he didn't say that. He said speedy note entry or something in finale. I said, there's, there's no quicker way to enter notes when you don't want to have to play it than this technique in logic. And I've done step time for years, and I've written complete pieces with it. And um, Digital Performer, uh, which is what I usually use, acts a little differently than uh, Logic, but Logic it can be used just as effectively. So let's load Logic. Yes. Click OK to that, and go to New. And in Software Instrument, right, get rid of that and go to the drawer, and go to piano, and I like the Yamaha, good, and close the drawer. And I have a way I like to work, which is to open a couple of windows that make things a little bit easier. I have three monitors, but I'll do it on this one for demonstration purposes. Let's first click in the, uh, right after the track, and right-click and create an empty MIDI region and give yourself a little leeway there. <clears throat> Double-click on that and click on Score and maybe make that a little bigger, tighten it up a little. And while we're doing this, let's open this up again for a second. This is very important. If you want to play your keyboard and go into this, you've got to turn MIDI in on. See where it says MIDI in? Turn that on. Good, we're good now. Now make this window maybe a tad smaller this way. And you could even grab this and make that a little smaller. Maybe extend this a little bit, although that really doesn't matter. And click on this so that we can see the beat, the beat, beats in project, so you can see all the beats here. Very helpful for what we're doing. Then open up two other windows. Open up your piano roll. Put it over here, and the other window we're going to open is the step input, and that's this guy, and that's the guy we're real interested in. Now, here's, here's the deal with this. Right now, if you look at this window, we've selected an eighth note. Now, if you have a specific loudness you want, put it here, but I always just leave it, and I adjust the loudnesses later on if I want to with the step editor, okay? right here, step editor. What this means is that when you play a note on the keyboard, it's going to input on whatever pitch you hit an eighth note. Now, there are two ways to make the playhead advance. One is to play a note, or one is to tap the space bar on the computer. That's one of the dirty little secrets. When we tap the space bar, it will advance by an eighth. Now, Happy birthday starts on the third beat of the measure, on a three and, as we would say in, in our musical counting. So I want to advance the playhead right now to that third beat. So I'm going to use the space bar, and if you watch the numbers on the screen, you will see it um, count with me. One, that's now on the and, and, two, and. Now we're ready to put the next note in on one, three. See it up here? Third beat. Uh, I have eighth notes, so I'm going to play two middle Cs. Now, I also want to put this in 3-4 time, which I forgot, but there we are. Okay, make sure you do that, as happy birthday is a waltz. And there we are on the third, on the three end of the first measure. Now I want a quarter note. Now watch how I get the quarter note. I'm not going to select a quarter note here. That would require changing these all the time. So I'm just going to play a game with the space bar. The next note is D. I have to arm the step input window. If that has to be on for this to work. You can't have it off like that. It has to be on. So I'm going to play the D now with a space bar. And then the C with a space bar and the E with a space bar. And then the, actually that should have been an F. I can go over and fix that. Right, now the E for it's now on the third measure for a speed. Um, I need that to be a half note. So I'm going to hit the E and I'm going to hit and three, two, excuse me. And so it's four beats long. Actually, the note itself is not four beats long. 
We're simply putting these notes metrically where they belong to make the piece happy birthday. Right now, they're all eighth notes, and they're all the length of an eighth note. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, I'm going to continue happy birthday, and watch what I do. I need another two Cs, both eighth notes. Then I need another D, which is a quarter note. I hit the space bar. C, space bar, G, space bar, and F, three space bars to advance me to the third beat again. Now I need two Cs again, which I just play the Cs. Now I've got to go to high C, space bar, A, space bar, F, space bar, E, space bar, D, space bar, then two B flats, then an A space bar, F space bar, G space bar, and an F, and to make it kosher, uh, three space bars to make it a half note. Now, we'll go back to the beginning and we'll play this. So let's go back to the beginning and play. Let's go back to the beginning again. And we'll click on them so that I get them over in my uh, piano roll notation. Now you'll notice, and I can make this a little, give me myself a little real estate, make it a little bigger, wider. You can see that they're all eighth notes, the length of eighth notes. If I want to make them the right length, I can go and I can edit them. But there's a quicker way to make things legato. So select all the notes except the last one. There's a reason for that. What it'll do is it'll extend that forever. We want all these notes extended to the next note. So this note, which is an eighth, will become a quarter because it'll get extended to the beginning of this note. The key stroke for that, and this is brilliant, you hold the shift key down and you hit the forward slash key beneath the delete key on your keyboard, and boom, they all go to legato length. Nothing overlaps, but they all connect. Now, if you look at our music now, and we take a listen to it, hold Option, click on the staff, and play. hit the space bar to play it. And you can hear how legato it sounds, because all those notes are the right lengths. Okay, now, if we wanted to add another track, first of all, all of this is G clef, so I'm, I, I'm going to take it off the style of piano and make it treble. Now, I would like to add a left hand to this somehow, so I'm going to add another track by holding the Option key and dragging this track down so I can record on it. I'm going to get rid of the actual data on that track. I'm going to rewind this to the beginning, and... I can add another empty MIDI region and drag it over. That would be fine. And now if I and make it a bass, click on him, uh, click down here and make it a bass clef. There it is right at the top. And if I double click here, it, I can see them both. Now what I want to do is I want to add some chords. Now I... I have to just, again, I can advance it. Now, my chords are all going to be lengths of quarters because my smallest chord length is going to be a quarter. So I'm going to bring up my, uh, this time I'll use the keystroke, option, command, K, and you'll see it brought up our step time window. I'm going to set it for quarters. And I want my first chord to be on the second beat. Now, I could advance it or just set this on the second beat. You can see up here I did that. Now I want an F chord. So I'm going to play an F chord, and I'm going to hit the notes, the F chord, and it's going to be a quarter beat long. I'm going to hit the space bar twice. Then I'm going to play a, a C7 chord. Advance it twice. Another G7, C7 chord. And then I'm going to hit it twice. Then I'm going to hit the F chord. Then I'm going to advance it two quarters, and then I'm going to put an F chord. And then I'm going to hit two quarters, and I'm going to play a B flat, a B flat chord. I hit it again, two quarters. Notice it skipped the two eighths. And then I'm going to have here. I want a an F chord, first inversion, first second inversion, and then I want on 
I'm going to advance it one quarter, and I want a quarter here, and then I want another quarter on this beat, which is going to be longer than that, most likely. Now, again, you can see the chords here. I want them all to basically be legato again. So I grab all of this, except the last one, because he'll go on forever. It can be corrected, but I'd rather not have to deal with that. And I am going to hit Shift, forward slash under the lead key, and we will just say shorten. There we are. So you can see now they're all the right length. Close this window, go back here, option, click, and we'll play it. And these last notes, we probably want them a little longer. So we can extend those right here, three beats, and click here. This is why I like having this window open. It's so much easier to change those, those uh, durations in this regard. Yeah, there you go. So there's your happy birthday. I never played the piece, but we had some chords. You can have chords when you put these in. You can play double notes. You cannot hold one longer and have the other. I have it go long. You can do that in Digital Performer, but you can't do it in this app. It doesn't matter. This works really well. And you can always, like if you wanted to have one note longer than the others, first of all, you have to see my video on polyphony uh, to know how to do that. But having this editor and this editor both open at the same time just makes it so nice because you can sometimes you want to know the note you can't see it so well here but sometimes you want to know the length you can see it much better over here and make the edits quicker over here there's nothing worse than changing a, a note length by working with this i mean that can take forever nice information but it just isn't intuitive enough so there you there you go there's your happy birthday so anyway i hope this tutorial has helped um, or at least suggested something you might try, okay? And until next time, uh, be good. <laughs>